There is absolutely a strategy to draft your fantasy football team, specifically with each of the positions. If you listen to me and you pay attention throughout the year, you'll have a shot at the title by the end. Roughly 40 million people play fantasy football, and Matthew Barry is the absolute expert. So my name is Matthew Barry, and my official title is Senior Fantasy and Sports Betting Analyst for NBC Sports and Peacock. I'm often referred to the godfather of fantasy football. Matthew Barry is going to take us position by position highlighting what stats make a successful fantasy option. When it comes to quarterbacks in general, what you want is dual threat quarterbacks. Quarterbacks that not only get you fantasy points with their arm, but with their legs. Last season, out of the top six quarterbacks in fantasy points per game, four of them had 700 or more rushing yards. And in fact, eight of the top 10 fantasy quarterbacks in points per game last year had at least 350 rushing yards. You really want a dual threat quarterback because if they don't get you fantasy points with their legs, you need them to have 40 passing touchdown upside. And there just aren't a lot of quarterbacks like that in the NFL right now. I also think it's important to understand tiers. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Jalen Birds are kind of the elite top three. But there's a clear top eight quarterbacks. What you really want is quarterbacks that run and throw, that have talent around them. You can be the best quarterback in the world, but if you've got the worst offensive line, it's hard to throw from your back. Josh Allen's a great example. Josh Allen had a bad completion percentage. They said he was more of a runner than a thrower. Year three, Josh Allen gets Stephon Diggs, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. What happens? He becomes the number one quarterback in fantasy. Everyone talks about his accuracy, his elite passing. Did Josh Allen suddenly become a better quarterback? Yes, he did. Having Stephon Diggs to throw to makes you a better quarterback. For the running back position, volume is king. The top five running backs in fantasy points per game last season all had at least 310 touches. 16 of the top 20 had at least 250 touches. All finished as top 20 running backs in fantasy points per game. The next thing is what kind of touches are they getting? Specifically, we want to look for high value touches, receptions, and red zone touches. Are they getting the ball when the team gets inside their opponent's 20 yard line? That's the red zone. Are they getting it in goal to go situations, which is inside an opponent's 10 yard line? So ideally you want running backs that touch the ball a lot and that they touch the ball a lot when they get close to the goal line and they touch the ball a lot from their quarterback, not just on first and second down, but also on third down as part of the passing attack. In terms of wide receiver, that's somebody that is earning a high percentage of targets, target share, and targets for routes run. Wide receivers need to have the ability to earn targets by getting open. The actual best wide receivers in the NFL tend to be the ones who score the most fantasy points. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs, those guys are the best wide receivers in the NFL, and they also are the ones who score the most fantasy points. If you want some efficiency metrics, if you want to get a little bit dirty, target share, targets per route run, Yards per route run are all good efficiency metrics for wide receivers. Wide receivers tend to be safer early round picks due to consistency and lower injury risk. When you think about it, running backs are being tackled hard. They're going in between the pile. Wide receivers, they bounce out of bounds. They're being hit by a defensive back, not a defensive lineman. Wide receivers tend to have a lower injury risk. I also like rookies, by the way. Look at the second half rookie wide receivers. There's a number of talented wide receivers who might start slow as rookies, but over the second half of the year will have a huge impact. You think about last year, with guys like Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jahan Dotson at times. That's another place to look for as you get further into the season. And then at the tight end position, what you want is you want to see how many snaps are they out on a passing play. Are they used primarily as a blocker or are they used as a passer? Some Titans are really just glorified wide receivers. What's their opportunity? We can look at the talent. If they have a good quarterback, is the tight end used more as a blocker in this offense or is the tight end used as a passing weapon in the offense? Generally speaking, I either want to be one of the first people in my league to get a tight end or one of the last. Because having an elite tight end can be a huge advantage. Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson, for me, are those top three. I think they stand up above the rest. We spent a lot of time looking at trying to predict kicker scoring and kicker scoring year over year over year. And generally speaking, the best kicker in fantasy football and like the 12th kicker in fantasy football, the difference is like one and a half points a game. There's just not much difference. There's a lot of variance. You like kickers on good offenses. You like kickers that play indoors in warm weather cities. So they're not often kicking in bad weather. You can look at defenses that give up the most field goals that have good red zone defense, but bad defense in the middle of the field, you know, kind of their bend don't break defenses their teams will come down and they often will kick but generally speaking it doesn't make sense to draft a kicker before the last round 
With defenses, you can predict something. You can predict, hey, this is a team that likes to blitz a lot, so probably they'll generate, you know, some sacks, maybe a few more turnovers. But honestly, it's generally fairly fluky. If you look at defensive scoring year after year, it rarely carries over from season to season. So streaming is always a, a much better option than saying, I'm going to go out and target this. There are defenses that we think are going to be pretty good, the Eagles and the Niners. But you're often better off of just picking the defense that's playing an inept offense week after week. Now that you have your team built, let's get to the most important important part. A fantasy team name is very important, right? This is not a decision to take lightly. The team name should reflect your personality and ideally insult somebody else in your league. Fantasy football, there is no one right way to play. There is no one right way to draft. Ultimately, you have to figure out what works for you and do what you want to do. 